Good morning and welcome to this online service. It's Sunday the 15th of August. My name is Richard Jethui and I'm the rector of this church. I'm going to be leading this service and Pam Harvey, one of our retired clergy, is going to be preaching a little bit later. We've been doing this now for very nearly 18 months. Some of you have been here week by week, joining in, worshipping, participating together. Uh, for some of you, you may be new uh, and this may be the very first time and you're particularly welcome. If there's anything I can do to help you, please do contact me. Uh, but hopefully that everything you need in order to be able to participate in this service, to praise, to pray, to learn together, will be on screen as we continue. I have got some important news. At the end of the service, I'm going to be sharing the pattern of services that are going to resume at the beginning of September at our church. Um, we, as I've said, we've had these 18 months of very peculiar uh, and difficult times. We've had uh, on-site services going on for some months now, but they've been deliberately different. And now we're starting a new pattern from the beginning of September. And do stay tuned to find out more about that. But let's prepare our hearts for prayer and for praise. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. writes in our next passage from Ephesians. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. So as we thank God for his mercy, let's ask forgiveness for our foolishness and help to live carefully and wisely. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. 
and we often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we join in giving thanks still to God in the words of Psalm 111. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the company of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures forever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant for ever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 5. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, series for the last few weeks. We've been looking at Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus. Ephesus is a big city port. It's not, not a big city port now, but it was then. But it was dominated by this magnificent temple, the Temple of Diana, or sometimes she was called Artemis. She was an Egyptian goddess and everything really revolved around that, all the trade and everything. Very impressive building, influenced every part of life in that city. So it was a big challenge to Paul and to all who were followers of the Lord Jesus, because the belief in Diana was totally opposite and opposed to Christianity in every possible way. So a tough place for Christians to live and work, needed lots of help to help them to be true to Christ. And so we find Paul, he spent three years there. Um, he had at least two visits. He wrote this letter, which for us is six chapters and quite long chapters at that. So a substantial letter and uh, we're glad, I hope you are. I'm certainly glad that it's in our Bible today. So we come to chapter five and it's about how to live as Christians. Now, I was brought up on the old King James version, the authorized version, as we call it. And uh, I dare say uh, some of you know what that is all about. And um, so there, verse two of chapter five, for instance, we read in our Bibles today, live a life of love in the Authorised version, it is walk in love. And chapter 5 and verse 8 is live as children of light. In the old AV, it's walk as children of light. Now, I like that word walk because it speaks of 
progress. It speaks of getting on with life. It speaks of doing as well as of being. Being is important. Uh, life and the Christian life isn't all doing, it's being. But the two come together there. It reminds me of a chemistry master, a science master I had many, many years ago in the school I went to. He has an interesting saying. Now, remember, he was a science master and we were doing experiments with some of you may remember this bunts and burners and hot metals and all the hot liquids and acids and everything. And he used to say, do as I say, don't do as I do. And I think about that, I thought, oh, that's a bit nervous. But however, I survived and so did the whole class. But it's much better, really. Um, to think about it like this. And this was a little mantra thing, certainly I picked up and used when I was training youth leaders and so on. Not so much as do as I do and, and do as I say. And it became for us a little kind of mantra, walk the talk. In other words, don't be all talk and you don't do it. And that's true for the Christian life. That's true for our walk with Jesus. It's important that we talk about it. But it's got to be developed. It's got to be seen as something that influences our lives day by day. So walk the talk is quite an important thing. It's not just theory, but it's action. It is being as well as doing. And so Paul is here in these first few verses uh, that we're looking at uh, in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. And it says, Jesus said himself, and he said it to his disciples, Recorded in John's gospel, he says it to us today. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. What a lovely thing that is, isn't it? If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. So let's just think about these few verses. First of all, uh, it's about your walk, how we live day by day, and what does this involve? And uh, Paul starts off, doesn't he, by uh, saying in those verses, be very careful then how you live. Be very careful then how you walk. The old AV again um, has an interesting word. We don't use it these days, still in the dictionary. And it says walk circumspectly. I, I love that word, circumspectly. And uh, it means um, walk with care, walk with caution. Be prudent, be vigilant. I've just um, been down to London and uh, got on the underground. And uh, you know what it says when you get on the underground? Mind the gap. Mind the gap. And this voice continues on and on. Mind the gap. Watch your step. Sometimes say that if we're going up and down uh, stairs or on a rough path. People say that to me more and more <laughs> as I get older. Watch your step. And that is really what Paul is saying here. You know, be vigilant, uh, be thoughtful, watch it, walk circumspectly. But he also talks about time, doesn't he? He says, uh, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Now, time is a, a really precious thing, isn't it? But, you know, we speak about it in a very lackadaisical way. We talk about wasting time or saving time or making up time, all sorts of ways we talk about it. And uh, but, you know, time is, is, is really very important. And Paul says making the most of every opportunity. Now, there's a challenge for us. I found this little um, poem, a little doddrel thing, really, once many years ago. I found it actually stuck to the till in the days when you had tills in shops. And it went like this. I copied it down and I've still got it. And it goes like this. I have only just a minute, only 60 seconds in it given to me can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I will suffer if I lose it. Give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute, but eternity is in it. So Paul is reminding us here about the value of time and how we need to use it. Uh, but he goes on, doesn't he, uh, to talk about understanding what the Lord's will is. That's in verse 17 that we're looking at. Understanding what the Lord's will is. Seeking God's will. How do we do that? Well, it's not always easy. We don't always get it right. But we need to work at it. And, of course, the best way, of course, is reading the scriptures, the Bible, whenever you can, daily if that's possible. Have a system with you which 
helps you to read a few verses each day with a little explanation. Loads of help for that. Loads of help on the internet as well. Listening to sermons, even listen to me. <laughs> um, talks and sharing with one another. Getting into a, a little Bible study group, a little fellowship group. All sorts of ways um, to seek God's will uh, so that we understand it. Because that's the way it works for us today. And then the uh, fourth thing, we walk, walking circumspectly, there's your time, there's seeking God's will. And it goes on, doesn't it, to say, um, uh, asking for God's help in verse 18. Asking for God's help. Be filled with the Spirit. So how are we filled with the Spirit? That's seeking God's help. Well, that's the gift God gives us the moment we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The moment we say, yes, Jesus Christ lived and died for me and is alive today. I trust him as my Lord and Savior. The moment that happens, God gives us the Holy Spirit. We, we may have um, a sense of uh, overwhelming sense from time to time of his love and his grace. Uh, but we, we, we it's there. It's there the moment we put our faith and trust in him. So walk is important, but time to think, pray, worship is equally so. Because he goes on to talk about our worship. So there was our walk. And now we come to our worship and how we engage with God. And that comes in the last two verses we have, had read to us, 19 and 20. And uh, it's good speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the spirit. Speaking to one another, encouraging one another. It's surprising how we don't have to preach a sermon to anyone. We don't perhaps even think, I can't actually remember a verse of scripture to quote. But if you know and love the Lord, how uh, really relatively easy it is just to just simply say, well, God helps me in that. That is what I read last night, last Sunday sermon, however it comes. Even something you read in a newspaper or a magazine or whatever. Encourage one another how much we need to do that. Encourage one another. And he goes on to say, sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Well, you're not going to be subjected to my singing, I can tell you. <laughs> um, but it's important, isn't it, that we sing. And, and I happen to live alone and I sing around the house. I mean, I've got a neighbour. I live in a semi-detached house. I don't think they can hear me. I've asked them once or twice. And they've either been very kind and said no, or they've truthfully said no. <laughs> um, and that is good. And you don't have to remember all the words, do you? or even remember or get the tune right. What a wonderful thing that is. So singing with one another too, not just on your own. And that is why we value singing so much. And we've missed it such a lot, haven't we, during these last months. And I, I love that. Again, I've gone back to the old authorised version. It says, making melody in your heart. I like that word, melody. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. And then last, but by no means le la, uh, uh, least, by no means least, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. How important Thanksgiving is. Thanksgiving is important in everyday lives. Just thanking someone for stepping off the pavement so that you could get by socially distanced or whatever that happens to be. You drive a car, putting your hand up when they let you go by. How enriching, how affirming that is to the other person. Loads of ways. But thanking God, not forgetting to thank God for his many blessings. You watch television, I'm quite sure. Read a newspaper, listen to the radio. What a world we're living in. What a wonderful world. In many ways, but what sadness there is. How richly blessed we are here. And we need to remember to thank God for it. So three aspects of worship, speaking to one another, encouraging one another, singing, singing to God, and again, encouraging one another. And it, it, it builds yourself up as well. And with thanksgiving. So here we have in these, just these few verses, it's about your walk. It's about Walking with Jesus, it, it's about everyday life. It's how we are. It's not just doing, but it's being as well. And how we worship, not just on Sundays, but day by day. So living a godly life, 
really would be a good title for this. And godly is such a lovely word, isn't it? I sometimes think of people and think, how would I describe them? And I would describe them as godly. It's not that they're always preaching at me or reminding me that I haven't done this or challenging me, but they just live a godly life. And as I look back on my childhood, I was influenced by people. I know now. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have known what it was then. I couldn't have explained it. But I now know that those people lived a godly life, a lovely word, lovely thing to be said of any of us. And that this includes being as well as doing. I just want to finish with one verse of one of my favourite hymns. You may know it um, as we conclude this part of the service. It goes like this. May the mind of Christ our Saviour live in thee from day to day. By his love and power controlling all I do and say. Have a good week. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Amen. Let's pray. As members of the body of Christ, bound together in his love, let us pray together now, confident in God's promise to be among us. 
During the prayers that follow, the response to the words, Use us, Lord, is as channels of your grace. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. O God, holy and righteous, greater than human thoughts can imagine or tongues express, source of all love and love itself, you have revealed your nature through your Son, Jesus Christ, and so we praise you. This love fills us, your people, enabling us to live and work for your kingdom. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. Heavenly Father, we speak so many words. It's easy to talk about the weather, our families, our interests, our aches and pains. Forgive us for remaining silent over deeper things. Our thoughts and our feelings, our blessings and faith, make us more sensitive to the needs of others and bold to speak the words they need to hear from you. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. We praise you, Lord God, that in love you send your Spirit to enable and empower us. Help us to live in the reality of the promise of the Spirit's continuing presence with us, praising you for every sign of peace justice and reconciliation that we encounter. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. Lord God, we thank you that much is being done in your name to lessen suffering in the world. You are always calling us to leave self behind, to follow Christ, to be used by you to answer the prayers and needs of others. Help us to use the faith we have found to reshape the world around us. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. Spirit of God, without you we can do nothing. Only as we are filled with your love can we reach out to others. We pray that you will move, live and grow in us until our ways are your ways, so that our small hearts no longer limit the greatness of your resources, and others begin to see you living and working in our world. Use us, Lord, as channels of your grace. As we come towards the end of our prayer time together, some words from St. Patrick that were written over 1700 years ago, but are still as relevant today. May the strength of God pilot us. May the power of God preserve us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the hand of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the shield of God defend us. May the host of God guard us against the snares of the evil one and the temptations of the world. May Christ be with us. Christ above us. Christ in us. Christ before us. May thy salvation, O Lord, be always ours, this day and evermore. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom, and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price, through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen.
So as I promised at the beginning of the service, it's time to, to tell you about the new pattern of services that's going to take place from the beginning of September, Sunday, September the 5th. The main news is that there will be a single on-site service in church at 10 a.m. every Sunday. Uh, that will alternate between being a Holy Communion service and a service of morning prayer or a service of the word, um, but it will be every Sunday at 10 a.m. Once a month on the first Thursday of the month, there will be a midweek Holy Communion service also at 10 a.m. in church too. We will not be doing pre-recorded services on a Sunday uh, anymore at that point, except in exceptional circumstances. Instead, what we'll be doing is live streaming those 10 a.m. services as much as we possibly can, uh, given uh, any limits or def deficit in our technological ability. But the plan is that all of those services will be streamed live so that those who are uh, unable or uh, unwilling yet to continue to come on site uh, will be able to see, observe and join in uh, what's happening in the church building at that time. Our weekly, uh, weekday uh, morning prayer services, which have been uh, streamed every uh, day on the St Peter's Facebook page, uh, will now be going to just three times a week. So there'll be Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 9.15 and our Tuesday morning morning prayer at 8.30 will be continuing uh, either in church or as it has been for a while at uh, the Warmer's house. So that's what's going to be happening. Um, we will still be continuing to take appropriate measures to make sure that uh, people coming to join together in worship are not at risk of catching COVID. Uh, and so uh, you will still see a few things going on for, for some weeks and maybe months yet in terms of space set aside for people to sit who would like to be distanced and uh, mask wearing at appropriate points to continue to minimise that risk. But I would encourage you, if it's been a while for you since you've dared venture an, on an on-site service, I may encourage you to, to, to think of it and pray. Uh, about starting again from the beginning of September at our 10 a.m. Sunday morning services. It would be a delight and a pleasure to join with you in that way as well, to worship together. A final piece of news. Over the last three years, we have enjoyed and benefited from Sharon Andrews being our curate in the benefice. But after serving three years, it's time for Sharon to move on. And so she'll be leaving us and moving on to the next stage of her ministry at the end of August. So her final Sunday is in a couple of weeks time on Sunday the 29th. She'll be presiding and preaching at a Holy Communion service at All Saints at 9am and then preaching at the evening prayer at 4.30 at St Peter's. After both of those services, there'll be a chance to, to share refreshments and to say thank you to Sharon and pray for her, bless her as she continues on to the next phase. If you would like to give to, towards a leaving present that we can uh, give to Sharon as she moves on, then please do um, do so. The easiest way to do so is make a gift through our online giving platform, the details of which are on screen now, and to just send a note to either the treasurer, either Phil or Doreen, or to send a note to me to say that that's what your gift is for. And we'll gather all those together and make a single gift to her from the benefice. And please do come and be part of her final services and pray for her at the end of August. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honour and glory for ever and ever, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.